Rogue One was everything we wanted it to be. Darker than any other Star Wars movie, Rogue One told a fascinating story about truly nuanced characters. Best of all, it was stacked with enough cameos and Easter eggs to make the biggest fan go flimsy. Here's a handful of the gems hidden within the latest galactic blockbuster. The blue milk that we all know and kind of wanted to try was first seen at Luke Skywalker's home in A New Hope. Just like his auntie and uncle, the Ursos are also moisture farmers and have a kitchen stacked with the creamy nectar of the Banthas. We hear Cassian Anders' informant on Jetta call the Death Star a planet killer. This is a throwback to the original name for Luke, Luke Starkiller, and the name for the First Order's answer to the battle station, Starkiller Base. When Jin arrives at the Rebel base on Yavin 4, we are treated with a recreation of the same iconic shot from A New Hope. Before Jin and Cassian embark for Jeddah, Mon Momoth asks Bail Organa to reach out to his old Jedi friend from the Clone Wars. This is, of course, Obi-Wan Kenobi, whom Bail entrusts Leia to find. Bail also mentions that he trusts Leia with his life, which hits you right in the feels as we know that Leia's subsequent capture by Darth Vader leads to the destruction of Alderaan and the death of Bail Organa himself. As Jin and Cassian walk through the Rebel base, we catch a glimpse of Chopper, the mischievous little droid from the animated show Star Wars Rebels. The Rebels crew definitely take part in the events of Rogue One, and there are multiple references to them throughout. A General Syndulla is even mentioned over the intercom, which is either Hera or her father, General Syndulla, from the Clone Wars. At one point, we can spot the alien-like droid roaming the streets of Jeddah, along with some other very familiar faces. Remember the pig-faced dude and his butt-faced friend from the cantina scene in A New Hope? They're getting around the galaxy as we see them in Jeddah too with a fraction more friendliness toward Jin and Cassian than they showed to Luke and Obi-Wan. Ah, the good old days where arms were in abundance. Jeddah is an absolute haven of Jedi history and lore, from the Guardians of the Wills to the city itself, which is built on a huge source of kyber crystals, the power source for lightsabers and, incidentally, the Death Star. The city also houses a Jedi temple, and as Bodhi journeys out to meet Saw Gerrera, we catch a glimpse of an immense statue of a Jedi, now felled and crumbling into the sand. One of the most iconic lines in cinema history makes a comeback. Saw Gerrera is the one to say it this time, though unlike the original, it isn't a trap after all. It's a trap! Droids play a huge role in the character lineup of Star Wars films, and Rogue One is no exception. Alan Tudyk's ex-Imperial Enforcer droid is one of the highlights, with regular deadpan statements surrounding the chances of the team's success and survival sending our thoughts back to our old pal C-3PO. He means well. When we finally catch up with Darth Vader, he's chillin' on Mustafa, the lava lace planet where he had his final showdown with Obi-Wan in Revenge of the Sith. Either he's built himself a nice little castle, or his new pad is actually a Sith temple, like the one in which he battled Ahsoka Tano in the Star Wars Rebels Season 2 finale. The eyes of Vader's mask even have the same red tint as they did in Rebels. At one point in the film, we also discover Vader floating in a Bakta tank, a beautifully haunting image reminiscent of the shot of his son recovering in Empire Strikes Back. There are several mentions of Luke's buddy and fellow Starfighter pilot Wedge Antilles throughout Rogue One, but we never see him on screen. I have a very bad feeling about this. It wouldn't be a Star Wars movie without someone getting a bad feeling. This time it's K2, but he doesn't even get to finish the iconic quote before Cassian cuts him off. In the final battle above Scarif, we get our closest look yet at the gang from the Rebels. Early on, their ship the Ghost can be clearly seen alongside Tantive IV. We get another glimpse at it later on as it flies across the view screen of Krennic's Star Destroyer, settling all concerns for the crew's safety. Red leader Garvin Dreyas and gold leader John Vander can be seen in the Scarif space battle. These two characters appeared in A New Hope and were digitally added to Rogue One. In what has got to be one of Star Wars' best battle scenes, the Rebel fleet use a hammerhead corvette to literally push one inert Star Destroyer into the other two. It's such a simple move, but proves absolutely invaluable, showing how the Rebel Alliance didn't win by strengths of force, but improvisation and ingenuity. Also, the three hammerhead corvettes we see in the battle were stolen by Leia and, you guessed it, the crew of the Ghost in Star Wars Rebels Season 2. When searching for the Death Star plans, Jin stumbles across some kind of Imperial mission concerning a Black Saber which is another term for a dark saber. This ancient and dangerous weapon appeared in Star Wars The Clone Wars and is an important part of Sabine's plot in the current season of Star Wars Rebels. In A New Hope, Luke uses the call sign of Red 5 as he flies into the X-Wing squadron. Another Red 5 pops up in Rogue One, before he conveniently dies, freeing up the sign for Luke to use just days later when he will be the one to blow up the Death Star. These are just some of the great references packed into possibly the greatest Star Wars film in recent history. If you haven't seen Rogue One yet, get along to the cinema and see if you can spot them all. Save the dream.